Today's guest is an icon and truly one of the reasons I fell in love with this whole Broadway thing in the first place. Ladies and gentlemen, Patty Lapone. Well, thank you, Paul. How are you? I'm well, thanks. How are you? I'm great. Uh, you know, it's funny. I've been able to meet you many times over the last, since I started doing this, and um, I used to still always get me a little nervous. I always turn a little bit into like the 12 year old holding the Avita album, obsessing oh, over you. Oh dear. I'm just a regular person. <laughs> really. <laughs> Contrary to any reports, you're just a regular exactly, person. Exactly, I am. <laughs> now you are coming here from a very busy day. You, yeah. You, uh, you filmed an episode of Glee this morning. I shot a scene in Glee at Sardi's. And, and you played Patti Lapone. I, <laughs> I played Patti Lapone, whoever she is, whoever they thought I was. <laughs> And then I went up to do a run through of Seven Deadly Sins at New York City Ballet. So let's let's start with Glee. So how, are you a fan of the show? You've been mentioned on the show a yes, lot. Yes, I know. And I um, I sat with Ryan Murphy and I met Chris Colfer. And um, of course, the scene was with Leah Michelle. Sometimes it, I don't watch any TV because I'm on stage, but I've caught Glee, and when I've caught Glee, I've been moved by it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm a product of music in in schools from from elementary school. And it, I think it's essential for, it, it, for the curriculum. It's, it's essential for our soul. And, and I can't believe they've, well, I can't believe it. I think it's a tragedy that music's been cut in school. Right. So and th this answers to my upbringing and to, usually this, not that I was, but I just, I had talent, but a lot of the smartest kids in the school were musicians. They were the mathematicians. And they all played instruments. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? And right. they were the geeks, the geeks and the misfits, and then those of us that knew quite early on that they were, we were going to pursue this career, and we were all gravitated to the, to the music department. And I, I think that Glee answers to those kids, as Ryan Murphy said to anybody that's ever gotten a wedgie in school, hmm. you know, and, and it, it says a lot about the music that is part of our heritage, I think. Right. So uh, was playing Patti Lapone? Uh, have you done that before? Have you played Patti Lapone before? Well, on Will and Grace. Okay, right. Um, <laughs> where uh, Sean Hayes wanted to a lock of my hair. So yes, once before I played myself. It's a little disconcerting because I'm an actor, and even though the roles that I've played, I'm sure it's the roles that I've played, have created this persona. Mm -hmm. I'm still a working actor. Right. I'm not in the, in, in the category where I can afford not to work. Right. And I thought if I played myself, I would basically um, celebritize myself out of work. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Uh -huh. If I wanted to go up for a pilot, I didn't want to hear a casting director t t tell my agents, oh no, we don't want someone like Pat, uh, or Patti Lapone on because she's Patti Lapone from Glee or Patti Lapone. You want Lepone. to be a personality, you want to be an actress. Yeah, right. And, and I have to work. So yeah. how many times is Patti Lapone? The personality going to get hired. It's mm -hmm. not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So was it fun today? It was a lot of fun. It was a very short scene, and um, and they're adorable, those kids. So Seven Deadly Sins um, is playing at New York City Ballet, right, yes. from May 11th through the 15th. Yes. Now, this is a piece you've done before. Yes. And, and it's an interesting piece, something I know very little about. Actually, being a fan of you exposes me to things I would I would never go see Seven Deadly Sins, but I will go see it because Thank you. Patti LuPone is in it. Thank you. I think you, you're going to enjoy it. And you have really interesting tastes. What's very exciting to me is that that the work is still as challenging and very diverse. They're not throwing me into old character parts just yet. Do you know what I mean? Oh, and I, I have no idea how much longer this is going to last. But you, you're definitely on a roll. Do you feel? Do you feel like that? The last few years? I want to. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, like, I yes, I do, and I'm, I'm like grateful. Yeah. To God, Thespis, the Muses, that I'm still viable. Yeah. You know, that people. I mean, I, th I think all, all women my age are viable. It's what other people perceive as viable. You know, and they for some reason we're not. Um, Seven Deadly Sins came to me because Lynn, and Lynn didn't know I had done it before. Lynn Taylor Corbett. Lynn Taylor Corbett. She came to my dressing room during Gypsy and asked me if I would sing it, and I was shocked. I went, but I have sung it. <laughs> she said, do you know Seven Deadly Sins? I'm choreographing this for mm -hmm. Wendy Whalen, right. one of my all-time favorites at uh, New York City Ballet. And I was shocked and thrilled, number one, to be 
singing it again, number two to be dance, to be on the stage with Wendy Whelan, and three to be choreographed by Lynn Taylor Corbett in New York City Ballet, an environment, I mean, a, a, a ballet company that I emotionally grew up with because of the acting company. Right. The acting, right. The acting company was in Saratoga when the New York City Ballet was in Saratoga. Yeah. So tell me about this Wendy Whelan. I know Wendy about Whelan her. is um, an extraordinary, she's a New York City Ballet principal. They're, it must be a very democratic com company. They do not call them prima ballerina assolutas anymore. At least in New York City Ballet, there are principals, soloists, and the core. Hmm. And Wendy's been a principal maybe 20 years, maybe, I don't, I'm actually not quite sure how long she's been a principal. She's an extraordinary dancer. I can't remember the first ballet I, I saw her in, but I went, who is that? Wow. She has, um, she looks like, I keep saying, she looks like Nadia Comaneci when she was 15. <laughs> and she got all those tens. Um, she's <laughs> lithe and taut. There's not an ounce of fat on her body. And whenever they lift her, she keeps going up. She, it's, she, it's, it's, it seems like there's no gravity in her body. She's an exquisite dancer. So talk about, so this show, you're paired, you're... Talk about the structure of it. The, the way it's written, um, there's one character, two sides to that one character, and a one sings it and a two dances it. I'm the amoral one, and the dancer's the moral one. I'm practical. And there's a line, you know, she's the one with the looks, I'm realistic. She's just a little mad. My head is on straight. But, really, but we're really one divided being, even though you see two of us. So it's two sides of the reaction to the sin. Wow. It's very exciting. And we premiere on the 11th and we close on the 15th, but it's been booked for next year. So. Oh, wonderful. God, I'm a dancer. A dancer dances. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk. It's paired with Vienna waltzes. It's only 38 minutes long. In sure. and out. In and out. In and out. I'll be backstage <laughs> smoking cigarettes while you guys are watching Vienna waltzes, drinking. <laughs> And that damn thing gonna get over. <laughs> so I want to talk about this. This is exciting. Oh God, there, yes. There's a, there's a original cast recording for Women on the Verge, and and I love that when you open it, you get my, my favorite <laughs> one of my favorite moments in the show. <laughs> you and this crazy wig. That was that that was an awesome moment. Uh, so this is exciting that you got to make this. Very exciting. It's a beautiful score. Oh, it's a great score. How how does it feel? Um, now, there's been a few months since you finished the run, and obviously it was a shorter run than any of us wanted it to have. Yeah, any of us anticipated, indeed. Yeah, so w how, do you, how do you feel now looking back on the show? Well, Laura and I, Laura Bonanti and I, just went out the other night, we had dinner, and we both bemoaned the fact that it closed. So we're not, at least the two of us, are not happy that it's closed and miss it. I miss David, I miss Jeffrey, I miss Bart, and I miss the, the experience. It was a bold, original, musical yeah and and I I I have to say that I I find it really depressing that our young uh, you know our, our, our original our, the original material is not supported it, it can be criticized but it needs to be supported all of it needs to be supported yeah and I and I if I might take this opportunity to get on my soapbox I hate what's happened to Times Square I hate what's happened to Times Square. I don't think the people that go into Times Square know that there's theaters on the side streets. It seems to me bright lights and Applebee's. And you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, it's very depressing. All the more reason that our critics need to support what is, in our, what is our culture. And like I said, it, it, criticism is necessary for any artist to grow, any right. you know, lyricist, composer, playwright to grow. But it needs to be supported. Mm -hmm. And I think we were unfairly slated mm -hmm. by the critics. It was original. It was bold. I'm a huge fan of David Yazbek. And oh, I, I think he's great. I knew the minute I heard the score that they wouldn't understand it. I knew it was too sophisticated and different. Well, it broke our hearts, you can bet. And it broke our hearts even more when we, pl we closed prematurely, you know. But you know, I've been around for a long time and, and I'm philosophical about, at this point, at, about it at this point. I really hated leaving the crew, the cast, that Belasco Theater, which is pretty magical. And the audiences that didn't get a chance to see it. Yeah. Didn't get a chance to see that wig. Ha! <laughs> Where are those go-go boots? <laughs> well, it must be nice that uh, people are remembering your performance now that it's award season. 
Oh, yeah. We're thrilled. Oh. Oh, Lord, that'd be Laura and me, because yeah, Laura yeah, and I yeah. actually talked about it at dinner. <laughs> we actually went, eh, they're not going to remember us. We were too long ago. <laughs> 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 and then, and then, I'm seriously, and then it was a couple of days later where we were, you know, when the Drama League acknowledged us, and I, I texted Laura, and then the outer critics, and <clears throat> let's hope it doesn't end there. Do you want to go to the Tony Awards this year? I do, and I want to present. And we have to find out whether those guys will let me back on. <laughs> After my little meltdown, because I couldn't hear. Oh, that's another soapbox. I wish they put the orchestra back in the pit where it belongs. What happened at the Tony Awards? Well, they're on the, well, when, when they were at Radio City, they're on the ninth floor, and your conductor's about 50 feet out. So you're going like. Right. Then last year, apparently, or two years ago, they were in the Clinton Studios. I don't know why. And they were, they're not allowed to be in the pit anymore. Why? Huh. I don't know. If they want to sell seats, if they want it to look like American Idol, I don't know. Right. But the performance on stage, cannot hear. And we're Broadway. We're singing. So you're saying you had trouble when you were performing for Gypsy? Oh, totally. Oh, I didn't realize oh, that. Oh, totally. Couldn't hear in the, in the sound check. And I stopped and I said, I can't hear a thing. And I guess I shouldn't have stopped because it was really a camera blocking, not a sound check. So we're robbed of a sound check. And then um, I said, well, while we're stopped, put the orchestra back in the pit. And they didn't like that. But I'm, I'm on a soapbox, and there are other people as well. We can't, can't see our conductor in the ninth floor. Can't see our conductor 50 feet down. Can't hear. Right. So the orchestra should be where it belongs, in the pit, so we can see them. I want you to consider this show your soapbox. So if you ever have anything... Oh, great! You, are there, is there anything else you want to talk about? Huh. I know, I know you don't like Twitter. We, got, we, we talked oh, about no, that on the Oh, no, there's still there's a fake Patty Lapone out there that's not me. We, and we hate this person and don't support them. No, it's, and you know what? I, I'm, I'm trademarking my name so that it, I can't believe I have to trademark the thing I was born with that belongs to me. Well, you are a character on Glee. So what? it kind of makes sense. <laughs> Maybe I should change my name and let Patty Lupone be my stage name and then change my But there's, you know, there's, and there's a Patty, Patty Dot Lupone at Twitter, at Patty Dot Lupone, that's not me. We're I'm, taking them all down. Yeah, I have, I don't, I'm not on Twitter, I'm not on Facebook. Get a life for crying out loud. Yeah. I think it's terrible. Oh, it's ridiculous. So I also want to talk about this. Another, I love having things on this table that I can <laughs> pull up. Uh, I love this book. Thank you. And I have to tell you, it, when I heard you were writing it, it was almost like, is that really going to happen? Because it's something I've been waiting for my whole life. Oh, thanks, it was so It was so cool to, to read all your stories. There's one, <laughs> can I talk about my favorite story? Let me guess what it is. You're not going to guess it. Okay. It's so specific. Well, what, what, what would you guess? Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't even know why I thought I could guess. <laughs> uh, well, I love all the Avita stuff. And, and I can't believe Evita was such a difficult. Oh yeah. I mean, it's 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 amazing to read how like hard it was to go through all that. But I loved how you talked about how during rehearsals people were saying, well, "This is how Elaine Page did it. Oh, this right, is how Elaine yeah. did it. This is how yeah. Elaine did it." And I love the Martha Swope photo shoot because what what happened there? Right, because she asked you to put your. Did you tell us what happened? She actually so, said Martha Swope is a famed Broadway yeah. photographer and. Uh, she was on a ladder in the house, which would be the orchestra of the, of the theater. And we were on stage, and I was on the catwalk of the Casa Rosada. And she said, Patty, put your arms in that thing. You know, and I went, God, another one. I said, I don't do that, Martha. I do that. And I'd never done it before. You just made it up on the spot. I made it up on the spot. And this I, is now that, that's the poster that everybody has in their room. And, and, yeah. and then, you know, I said, I guess I'll be doing that now. And then, but then... Life magazine did a whole thing on Evita, and there is a picture of her on the Casa Rosada like this, and there's a picture of me above that like that. So it was divine. I mean, I'm convinced she was around. Totally convinced she was around. I also loved hearing about you going and hanging out with the hookers at the, after the show at, yeah. the, at the bar. Well, I didn't hang with the hookers. I watched them. I, but I sat, if anybody remembers the old oyster bar in the Plaza Hotel, um, you'd come in from 58th Street, or you could come in from the plaza, what I would come in from 58th, and go around the corner and sit in the far corner of this rectangular bar. It was a copper bar, and watch the hookers come in from the plaza, sit and look, check out who was in the oyster bar. And I was in overalls with long brown hair and no makeup, and there was a Jamaican bartender who saw me every, whenever I went in there, and he didn't know who I was, didn't know my name. <laughs> oh, poor pathetic little hooker, can't get arrested. And I would just watch the people, watch the night life. 
It's amazing that during this huge Avita successful run, that that's what you would do after the show. You'd go by yourself and have beer at this bar. Well, I couldn't go out. I really yeah. couldn't go. I couldn't do anything. Yeah. Uh, I don't think anybody even asked me out. <laughs> uh, I don't think people said to me, come on, buddy, you want to go out for dinner? I think that, you know, it was a really tough time. Yeah. And I was so sick of it being tough that when, when the weather changed and I could walk up to the plaza, because I was on 54th, so I walked, what, five blocks? Right, right. And um, so I'm getting a beer. I'm getting two if I feel like it. Whoopee! The one thing that I hate about, first of all, I just have to tell you personally, that when all that Sunset Boulevard oh, yeah. crap went down, you would have thought that, that it happened to me. That's how, that's how emotionally attached I was at that moment. <laughs> Thank but you, the one thing I hate about all of that is that I love hearing you sing Android Webber's music. Ah! You know, I mean, I love hearing you sing his music, and now I feel like that's gone. Oh yeah, baby. but you're but you're pretty good with Sondheim. Thank you. You're doing good with Sondheim. Thank you're going down that 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 catalog. Better, it's a better catalog. Um, yeah, this no Andrew and I will no. no. <laughs> yeah, that's done. Yeah, that's done. That's, that's done. a done topic. Yeah, and it's not even an important topic. You know what I mean? I mean, listen to me. It isn't. He writes crap music. Um, did Watch I say that? Watch the CDs. Evita was his best score. Evita, and in its bizarreness, when I first heard it, I swear to God, I thought he hated women. But it, the first was a rock concept album, which was kind of weird. Yeah. But then yeah. when you listen to, when I listen to the score, I go, you know, they did something really tremendous there. Yeah. But there are some very romantic moments in his music, and then there's some real trash that he doesn't even think about parting with. He's not a very, he's not a very good editor of his right, own stuff. Right. David Mamet is a brilliant editor of his material. Right. And I think you have to, if you're going to, if you're going to, you, if you have to put it out there, you're going to have to edit your material. You have to edit. Key. And he does not edit. So, you know, I, the, the bad outweighs the good for me. Not that there's more bad music than there is good music, but you're stuck hearing the bad music. Right. When, and it overshadows the good music. But your stuff is usually good. But the ladies paying, oh my God, every night I got to that going, oh my God. <laughs> and then, of course, my son tortured it with me when we came home. La, 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 la. Fire! La, 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 the ladies paying. <laughs> <laughs> he just tortured me. He didn't know what he was doing. It was the piece of music I hated the most in that uh, show. And my son just um, was his favorite piece. And when I got fired, he heard the word fire so many times in London that he would go, fire! <laughs> fire! <laughs> That's he was like three that. and a half years old. And he's into musicals now. He's performing, he's right? Not, he's, he's an acting major. He's not okay. a musical theater major okay. at Ithaca. Cool. But he loves backstage. He's coming with me on the road for four shows I'm doing. One with Mandy. Or two, three shows. One with Mandy and two with myself. He's coming on the road. He's been... Do you think you and Mandy will ever do your show on Broadway? Well. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Is there an announcement? <laughs> okay, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. There you go. That should soon. tell you. Soon. Good. Soon, <laughs> soon, soon. soon. So, uh, I, I, we're running out of time, but do you have any plans for the, the summer? Are you doing concerts? Are you going to take a vacation? I'm taking a vacation on the gay cruise! I love <laughs> oh, my you're doing gay, a gay cruise. I, I do them all the time. The Atlantis events cruise are, are so much Do you fun. have gay fans? I don't think I do. Do you? <laughs> um, and um, I, it's the, the med cruises, and I go to Europe, and, with, and this time my son and his girlfriend are coming. Oh, that's and great. And these are very gay. <laughs> <laughs> These cruises are very gay. There's a 24-hour <laughs> disco thump in the bow of the ship. It's a tw and it's like there's man soup in. <laughs> That's what we called it. In, in the pool and in the jacuzzis, it's like man soup. It's so brilliant. Everybody's good. in drag, and everybody is a big part of the cruise of these ships. Love when the gays come on because they're they're big tippers. They drink a lot and they have fun. I've been on straight cruises. Um, I, have a, I love cruising, so I, I don't mind working. You'd rather cruise with the gays. Oh, any time. I'm bringing Philip Rinaldi and his partner, Larry Your Kennedy. longtime publicist. My dear friend. And um, so we're going go to go back to uh, Italy, the motherland. Wonderful. And I have a couple of concerts, and I'm just waiting to see what happens next. Well, I'm waiting too. I, I can, oh, there's always something great around the corner. I hope so. Am I too old? Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much thank for coming by. Oh. I hope you'll come by again. Oh, of course I will. You know I will. Hopefully you'll be a regular guest. 
Oh, I'd love that. Thank you. Whenever I have something to say. And this is your soapbox. I'm Thank serious. You. Any I'm issue, I, I want you to knock on the door and come in. Well, and... my two issues are, you know, clean up Broadway. When Bloomberg leaves office, I hope the next mayor restores Times Square to some sort of sanity. And, and I hope that um, the orchestras go back in the pit. You know, permanently, even in our... We have beautiful Broadway houses. Oh, and the other thing? Uh -oh. Sound. I hope they turn the sound down. I'm not deaf yet, but they're going to make it. You don't want the, bl the blaring sound. Oh, my God. Okay. It's well, so now, we know, now we know what to work on. Oh, it's so loud. I'm, I can't be the only one that thinks that the theater is too loud. Okay. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad that we'll, we'll work on I'll do my best. <laughs> thank you so much, Patty. Thank you. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>